got this feeling. My partner, Noel Fielding. I am your super secret special agent armed with my license to sell. <laughs> Love it. Hey, everybody. It's been a couple weeks since we've been able to come to you and bring you it's what? It's been so busy. I know. It's been crazy. So we are actually uh, broadcasting, uh, not live, but we're recording today from our new office space here at the Quality First Real Estate Offices in Clovis on Shaw and Minnewawa. And uh, we've been blessed by our broker to have this amazing space together to, to share uh, where we can collaborate uh, much more efficiently and just getting a ton of stuff done, so we're super excited about that. But it's been a process with all of the work we've had moving in and getting all set up that we just neglected you guys, and we really apologize. So <laughs> Technical issues, computer problems, like <laughs> you wouldn't believe. I mean, bad stories, bad stories. Um, so this is episode six, A New Hope. A New <laughs> Hope, yeah. We, we, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, Tell me Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. No, we, we want to just give some shout-outs. Uh, you know, and just give you a little update to what we've got going on. We still have um, uh, uh, our cabin in Shaver that's still listed. We have a beautiful house in uh, the Clovis Foothills in Auburn area. Uh, we have a new condo out on uh, Barstow at Fig Garden, Fig Garden Loop. Um, what else do we have going on? Uh, well, we've got one, two, three, three or four escrows closing this week, so yeah. lots of, and we just um, wrapped up one the other day. Too. Yeah, so. yeah, we're, we're uh, anyway, we've been pulling out our hair, <laughs> so, so to <laughs> Me speak. more than him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh, today's Monday Morning Minutes, top five things you need to know when buying a house. We work with lots of buyers on a regular basis, and we've we've come across a string of of commonalities between some buyers recently, and we wanted to bring you some as more of an educational thing rather than some sort of a warning for buyers. Uh, but we wanted to hit hit it right here with uh, with number five. No house is perfect. It's hard to believe, I know, but. <laughs> Sometimes buyers go in uh, with the mindset that when they buy the house, it's going to be completely perfect when they move in. And that's just not the reality. Uh, in fact, the contract itself, the res Residential Purchase Agreement, the RPA, uh, stipulates right in there that all sales are by default as is. A, ma a matter of mindset, you're going to try to look for a high quality house, but understand that no house is perfect, which leads us to number four. 17 days to inspect. So with the idea that these homes aren't going to be perfect, and listen, every buyer's a little bit different. Their expectations, some are very happy just to be in the market to buy a house, a yeah. first, first time home buyers a lot of times, and some have had some experiences. So that expectation of the quality of the house is there. So remember, there's a 17-day inspection period, which is boilerplate language. Actually, we have the ability to stretch that period out a little bit or shrink it down a little bit as is appropriate, depending on the size, shape, condition of the house and things like that. Yeah. So, but, but by default, the contractor says you have 17 days to fully inspect the house. And the top three inspections that we always recommend and some people do and don't do all or, or some of them or, or any at all, depending on the situation. But there's always going to be that pest inspection. This is one that I'm a big believer in, especially if it's an older house. Absolutely. Even one that you can walk in an older house and it's been flipped, uh, renovated, and it looks fantastic. But the bones are what you're concerned about. So you right. want that pest inspection to assure the quality of those bones. Exactly. What else? What other inspection do we need to do? General home inspection, number two. That's number two on my list. These are, for me, I'm, I'm looking for deal breakers yes. in, in a, yeah. a general home inspection. Is there some problem with a foundation? Is it a post and uh, beam kind of construction where things that you might find in that undercarriage of the house are a big, big deal? But you'll find everything from light switches and, mm -hmm. and outlets that aren't working well. Help find these things and make you aware of it. And you're going to decide at that point, is this a house that I want to fix or do I need to get out of this deal? Right, right, right. So within that 17 days, if you determine that the house is no longer suitable for you, 
you are free to walk away with absolutely no recourse at all. Um, the only, I guess, risk you might take is if you actually paid to have the in-house inspected. Uh, it's money out of your pocket, but it's well worth it to know for sure if this is the house for you. Uh, leading to number three, uh, negotiations. Number three, negotiations. Well, what do you mean negotiations? Well, after all what we call the material facts are known, meaning you've had it inspected uh, and you, you know what's going on with the house, and the seller has also disclosed to you everything they know about the house, um, you have the opportunity to then request for repairs above and beyond uh, or, or what, what was found. And so those could be like, hey, uh, one of the windows is cracked, we want it replaced b before the close of escrow. Uh, you know, it could be something like, hey, um, you know, the air conditioning wasn't running as cold as we'd like, we'd like it recharged before the close of escrow. You know, it could be something typically like, it could be, hey, replace the GFCI outlet in the garage. So remember, bucks. when you do these negotiations, mm -hmm. so it's just that. There's, it's a two-way street. Exactly. Just because you're asking for it doesn't mean you're going to get it. Exactly. So yeah. they may say yes, no, or maybe so, and come back with some type of compromise. So it opens that mm -hmm. dialogue back up, and it is going to go both ways. And some people are, well, let's say you, you want to be very cautious about what you ask for. You over-ask in a seller's market like today. They might just say, you know what, forget it, we'll just go on to the next one. And yeah. it's no harm, no foul. Exactly. And so so be careful, I guess, what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to nitpick we, something. As, as your advisors, as your agents, it's our job to look out for your best interests. But part of that is also advising you on what might be reasonable and realistic to expect. And, uh, you know, things like replace the roof. It doesn't happen very often. Yeah, uh, no, and not in this market <laughs> at, know, at all. Yeah, and and so uh, you know, just be cautionary, eyes wide open. That uh, no house is perfect. When you request repairs, the seller is not required to do any of them. But hopefully, in best interest for them to sell the house and and their own pride of giving you a high quality product, they'll most likely fix a lot of the little things. Yeah. yeah. All right. And what's number two? Number two is, it, 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 this goes to the general search. You yeah, know, I'm, yeah. I'm looking for my home, and I think it's really important that, again, we talked about this in episode three a little bit. Is this my home? Or is this an investment? Mm -hmm. If this is your home, location, 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 right? What matters to you as a buyer? So, and you, I think before you even start the search or start us on the search for yeah. you, it's really important for you to kind of come to grips with some of that stuff. Exactly, exactly. Like, um, do you do you have kids, right? Right. I, I mean, if, if you got kids, the where they go to school is probably really important to you. Uh, do you go to church someplace? Do you have to commute to work? Uh, do you have a lot of friends and family in a particular area? You know, all those influencers are going to be really important for you to just determine right up front. Yeah. So not even not not just what school, but. How close can I get to this? We have uh, sellers that we know right now that, on a regular basis, they walk their kids to school, and yep. that's that's part of their life. They have one yep. car, yep. they walk their kids to school. Great, that's what they want to do. That's the way, and they put themselves in a position to do that. Exactly. So it's important to know that that's who you want to be. Yeah. Right. So location, location, location is, is probably one of the most critical things you can do. But after that, you need to kind of narrow down. Uh, make a list of like seven to ten things that you want in your house, right? And you want in your house. And then I always recommend just cut it in half and narrow it down to what you have to have in your house. Because in this market, as a seller's market as it is, the inventory is really low. You don't have necessarily the, the liberty to be as picky as you'd like to be. Right. So your have to's will be like, how many bedrooms and bathrooms does it need to have? How big does it need to be? Um, Pool or no pool, maybe. That might be a big deal, you know? Um, solar or no solar. That, that's a, a very common thing as well. Yeah. But narrow those down to your have-tos and let us go to work and try to, try to make sure we get all the have-tos and as many as the wants as possible. Right. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And, and when that happens, that leads me to number one. Number one. Do it now, baby. Do, Do it, it now. now. Do it. Do it now. Come on. <laughs> Um, it's, I've experienced this very recently and lots of times and buyers are, 
loving a house. Love, I mean, it's checked off box A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and maybe even a couple extras, and they're super hot to try, and then all yep. of a sudden they're disappearing, and they are in the process of writing an offer and not completing that offer because there's some trepidation, they're inexperienced maybe, nervous, and they're nervous about yeah, going yeah. forward. So understanding that, that the inspection period and all these things, that's the time to think about it. If you think it's right, first of all, your first instincts are probably right. Mm -hmm. um, but remember, you have that window. This is when you wanna, even before you pay for an inspection, go home. Listen, once the deal is yours and it's on, uh, you're in contract, now is the time to go home, talk to mom, dad, brothers, sisters, your wife, your friends, whatever you yeah. want to talk to, and really make sure that you've made the right decision yep. before you start spending money on inspections. Now, this advice is is framed within the fact that we are in a seller's market. Right. Um, we discussed this in episode number three. Uh, it's a seller's market. What that means is that for every house that's out there for sale right now, there are three to ten buyers looking to buy it. And um, that means that you don't have the time or the the, the, the freedom to just kind of, you know, piddle around. You don't and, have that luxury. Wait. The luxury. You don't have the luxury. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Yeah. You don't have the luxury to just wait. Um, and so we recommend be the first to see it, be the first to write the offer, um, you know, and, and, you know, be aggressive with, with what we call throwing paper uh, at your home buying process. Because really, that's all it is. It's, it, and, and now it's electronic paper, for, for, right. with that being said. So we send it, you digitally sign it, we send an offer to the, the seller's agent, they accept it, or, or, or we go into negotiations. The worst case scenario is you're, you're going to, at some point, put a deposit into escrow. But that's still your money, and it re remains your money yeah. until you release your contingencies. Yeah. Um, and that's the only time you have the subject to liquidated damages. Right. You know? well, that's what the 17 days are for. They're for you to fully vet the house to make sure that it is for sure your house. Now, listen, we want you to fall in love with your new house. Uh, these are just strategies that we employ on a regular basis to help our buyers actually be able to buy a house because there's so much competition right now, it's really, really difficult. So I think one of the, the end message for me is, uh, and what made me start thinking about this subject matter mm -hmm. in the first place was that you're going to find out everything you need to know about the property after. We start with, do I like it? Do I love it? Am I writing an offer? I've had a million buyers ask me, well, how old's this? How old's the air conditioner? How old's the roof? We don't know. And we won't necessarily know that up front unless we happen to be the listing agent on that too. And sometimes you've got that misconception that, that we know everything about every single house. We don't, and, and we don't do the research up front right. because for any given buyer, we're talking 20, 20 houses that we'll look at. That's hours and hours and hours. So yeah. keep that in mind. We're going to go out, and, and the first goal is to find a house you like in an area you like, and then if you love it, we're going to solve all the problems after the fact. Exactly. All right. That wraps up our top five things you need to know when buying a house for this week. Uh, just a couple of, uh, of house uh, uh, items for us. We have a new brand new website. Uh, we want you to go to it and check it out and give us some feedback. It's uh, www.kf homesales.com. Yep. Uh, we also have a brand new phone number, which is awesome. It's a group phone number. 559-235-9022. We weren't able to get one with our like name in there or anything right. like that. My personal one is, is 284-KIT, which is just kind of cool. Isn't you know? that clever? Isn't, Isn't that, that pretty clever? awesome? But See, I have like seven or eight letters in my last name, so that wouldn't work for yeah. me. Yeah. Just fielding doesn't work. Yeah, have anything that started with. There's nothing. That would be a bunch of yeah. random numbers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, that's all, folks. Don't for this forget week. to subscribe below. That's and, right. And if you need any of our information, it's on the slide to follow. Thanks so much. Have a great week. See you next time. It's not the feeling. I got this feeling in my body. Come on.